it's golden goose time. We need some golden eggs, so it's golden goose time to help us jumpstart our marketing campaign. And I'm so glad to have you all with us tonight. My name is Steve Carver. I'm talking to you from my home office and studio in Dunn, North Carolina. It's my presentation number 987. Thank you for joining me on my journey and let me be a part of yours. It has indeed been kind of a second day of fall. How about that? Second day of fall, uh, 2022. And uh, got hot today and a little bit of rain. I want you to know that I'm not a lawyer or a CPA. I'm not a professional tax advisor. I'm a fellow that's been in business for a long time, 63 years, and happy to share my experiences and some advice. Always the best advice you can get is get a second and third opinion before you make a major move in your business or your life affecting your security. And the small business centers are an excellent place to get those extra opinions. We're honored tonight to be sponsored by the Small Business Center in Sampson County Community College at Clinton, North Carolina. Mr. Bart Wright is the director there, outstanding director who does a great job and will always be ready to help you. If you want to get an appointment set up with him, I can help you do that. Or if you're out of the area and would like for me to help you get an appointment where you are, I'll be glad to do that as well. I'd appreciate it if you go to your chat button and type in your first and last name and your email address and your hometown. And let's just start making that a regular practice that we do as best we can uh, because it's important that we're able to get you registered at the Small Business Center and they need that basic information. Uh, otherwise, they're having to call you on the phone or send extra emails and such as that. So that really helps out if you just go to the chat, type in your first and last name, email address, and hometown. So, and first, plus that's the place to ask questions and to go from there as well. Hello, Heather. So glad to have you with us tonight. We have been missing you, and uh, good to have you back on board. Uh, how's things going with you? May not have her mic on yet, so look forward to talking with Heather when she gets on board. You got a lot of study guides this time, didn't you? And I'm not trying to overload you. I am trying to give you enough information you can start filling up your business journal with good uh, research information you can come back to. But there's some very important pieces in this study guide that I'd like for you to, to really pay some attention to. Of course, the one that's uh, marked 987, that's the talking points we'll be talking about tonight. But all the others are important, and we'll, we'll get to those as we go through it. But the last one listed, the MVP statements, are the ones that can help you more than any other way. And I definitely want you to please, if you would, to, uh, to be uh, working on those mission, uh, vision, and promise statements. They can mean so much to you. You got another piece of uh, uh, handout. It's got your assignments listed. Uh, the more of these you do, the better your chances are to get more uh, certificates. And uh, we certainly don't ask Sarita to make us some pretty certificates for this fall uh, so that we can present them to, to y'all. You'll get a certificate just for attending the classes, but if you, if you pass the test and uh, do your homework, then you'll get a graduation certificate and uh, be, it, be uh, an automatic member of the, uh, of the academy of associates and, uh, and entrepreneurs, which I'm very proud of all of you who have done that. Okay, let's learn from what some other people are doing. Uh, I want to say uh, it's, we, that's our best way of learning. I certainly do. I've done a lot of research this past week on what y'all shared with me. Uh, see, we got someone new on board that's got the affordable something or another with a 336 phone number. Glad to have you on board. Please go to your chat button and type in your name and your email address uh, so that we'll be able to register you and know, know who we're talking to. Uh, Sarita's on board with us. Thank you, as always, Sarita, a Master Associates. It's good to have you on to help us along. And Angela, good to have you on board tonight as well. Thank you for all that you're doing uh, for, to help us and as well to keep the center going. Uh, Charlotte, uh, I mean, uh, Shara Rush, Miss Rush over in Charlotte. 
I just can't seem to get the communications down pat to get her complete name and what she's doing. But she's been with us several times, and indeed, it may be one of the folks on board tonight that we can't recognize. Felicia was with us uh, earlier on. She sent in some good information about her new bookkeeping work that she's doing in the Charlotte area as well. Thank you for doing that. Uh, we appreciate everything you're doing. And Beth came on board this week. She's writing children's books. Uh, don't have any links for or see any samples, but I wish her the very best. That's the same for Brandy's. Uh, Brandy's uh, in the jewelry and craft business. Need some more information to help them link up. After this week, I'll only be posting the folks that are participating uh, uh, with every uh, webinar, so we won't use so much time up with folks that may not be coming back. Uh, Sarah's in Hampstead. She joined us through the Wilmington uh, work on Monday. She's doing virtual assistance type work. Nico's re restoring clothes. Uh, Jan Hunt is uh, working with a small business center in Fedville. Amy wanted to do a bakery, but I can't find her anywhere. Shirley's the same way. She was with us uh, from Charlotte. Looking forward to hearing more from Shirley. Taylor came on board Monday night with her herbal products, and she was holding a beautiful young baby through, this, through the thing she had her uh, videos on. I encourage you to turn your videos on if you'd like. Uh, the Shadow uh, it was on board with us now three times, but I can't find any information on her business. So looking forward for her sending me some stuff. And the same with Amelia. Uh, uh, joins on a regular basis, but not quite out there in front marketing yet. Darlene is over in Rose Hill in uh, Wallace Rose Hill area. Uh, her and her husband are dreaming of having a used car lot. Uh, selling used cars in the future, so it hasn't happened yet, but we're certainly going to try to help them move in that direction. Cheryl's down in Wilmington, and she's already doing event planning, but she wants to start doing it for herself and start her own business, so we're looking forward to helping her. T.M. Woodard is out on the road. He joins us uh, from all over the country. He's a long-distance truck driver, uh, wanting to start his own business, so we're glad to have him on board with us all the time. Crystal comes to us often. She's in Roseboro, and she wants she wants to get into the uh, into the uh, uh, making candles business. I see Rhonda Wilson's has just joined us. Thank you, Rhonda. Good to have you on board. And uh, Lisa is starting to send in some information. She lives in Benson. She's in the QuickBooks business, and she has done her vision statement. So I want to give her a hand and a big thank you for being the first person to send in the uh, vision statements. And Rhonda, who's just signed on, she was the second one, so we certainly appreciate that. So how about this, Rhonda? I am working for you. We want to get this Wilson's Mobile Mechanic uh, stuff on the map, get lots of business coming into you. I'm really looking forward to, uh, to seeing you grow this business. And after tonight, you'll get a lot of ideas on how we can improve that marketing to help customers find you. And thank you for the mission and division statements. Uh, I made the effort to do it. As a business coach, I'm always going to be saying, always be reviewing your work. And uh, these statements, like our business plans, can always be uh, uh, redone. You can change them, redo them, improve them all along. But the main thing is, is to be solid with your business so you can tell your customers what you're hoping to achieve. Tisha in Magnolia is uh, already working on her business plan. So looking forward to seeing that move forward. She's going to be uh, reconstituting clothes and, and selling them. Jennifer McNeil uh, in, in Charlotte area is a pastoral counselor and therapist. She has sent us a lot of information, so happy to be working with her and have learned so much from Jennifer. Hadn't actually had a chance to visit with her at length. We've shared right many messages. But she is doing a great job with her presentations on the Internet and getting ready. Really not promoting them. She's just getting her tools ready, but I appreciate what she is doing. And her pastoral website, she's done a wonderful job with uh, making it easier for people to email her. She's uh, got a good menu of all the services that she's doing. She's got her location listed here. Just really good work, Jennifer. Looking forward to seeing more. She's also working with some different types of uh, 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 experience. Let me show you a, a, uh, one of her marketing tools that uh, will be working for you. You may want to turn your microphones up. We're going to have several videos. Just, just a 
short video clip uh, that goes a long way in, uh, in, in, in getting people's attention, the look and the hook. I was, I was so excited to get those clips from Jennifer because that is an excellent way. Uh, as she indicated that she has a service or a menu that she can choose from. Anyone that knows how to log into those and use those in your advertising, and we can take those clips and put them into our work uh, to help hold people's attention. That was really cool, and I'm looking forward to learning a lot more about that. Uh, and Clinton, uh, hopefully uh, Jessica will be with us again tonight. Uh, uh, Jack is, uh, Jessica is involved with the uh, nutrition product sales called Corner Spot Nutrition. Really progressive business. I hadn't seen it before, but I started doing the research on it, and I'm uh, glad to have Jessica represented here. Here's her office over in Clinton. They do a great job with their website marketing. However, it took me an hour and a half to find out the location an hour and a half to find out the street location looking as hard as I could. So sometimes we have to revisit what we've got out there on the air and make sure that it's telling the customers the basic issues that we, they need to know. For example, uh, when, it, when we're talking about location, we want to Google, by, Google My Business account because it automatically gives people maps and uh, how to get to you. Katrenda uh, Bethay uh, over in the Durham area has already got her website up and work, uh, working. She's selling small, uh, fairly inexpensive items on her website called The Perfect Touch, and I'm looking forward to watching that grow as we go along. Patrice Fields in uh, Warsaw is attending all the, uh, all the uh, webinars, and she also went over to our, our seminar at James Keenan on Monday night, and so glad to see her there in person. She's getting a travel business started, and uh, just so so excited for her. A good chance to get a business on the side rocking. She is a busy, busy lady, doing about 50 other things. So she's just trying to work at her pace to get there. Joanne uh, in Clinton is a nail professional. She joined us last week. Hopefully, she'll be back with us tonight. Uh, she's doing a great job marketing in a, about five different ways. However, they're all mixed up. It's, it's hard to find one particular place where she's at. So uh, when we're doing this marketing, we have all these tools. We want to coordinate them in such a way that people can find you. But she's doing something really cool that I want to encourage us all to do is working by appointments. And as when she has an, an open appointment, she is on Facebook letting people know it. I uh, encourage them to come on in uh, to let her know. So that is a great use of social media. It's a great use of your database, and I want to encourage everybody to do it. Bess over in Dublin County, close to Warsaw, she's a health professional. Mainly uh, work, she works a, a long day now full time, but she's getting set up to basically start her own business, uh, helping people with different types of di diabetes issues primarily. And she's also raising bees, so she's naming her business the Honey Bee Health Coach. I think that's pretty cool, and I love her logo here. All of us need a logo. Do you have one for your business yet? One of the things that she has done extra well is she's come up with a really good menu of how to be in touch. I want to encourage each one of you this week to come up with a similar menu so that if one of your customers that's shopping for you can find you. Uh, do it exactly what Beth has done for us here. Every way that someone can contact you by email or find you or your business address, put it in a menu and make it available online. Uh, send me a copy of it so I can help you promote it. Beth uh, created a, a new video. I asked her to do one that was shorter and sweeter, mainly introducing herself. She already had one that was went into a lengthy uh, why someone wants to have an appointment. But she came forward with another video. Hi, I'm Beth. I'm the Honeybee Health Coach. I'm a registered nurse that provides health coaching, and I'm also a beekeeper. I find that the high mentality of taking care of each other is in the best interest of everybody. 
I'm excited to help you along your journey, whether that is chronic disease education, such as my signature program, Blast Through Prediabetes, which is a 12-week step-by-step coaching and education program to help work through your blood sugar issues or other chronic disease or health concerns. You can find me on Facebook or Instagram, both at Honey Health Coach. You can find me on YouTube. I also have a podcast, Honey Bee Health Coach, depending on how you like to receive your education. Take care. I think that is an excellent introduction video. Now, I encourage Beth to go back and let's do another one, give her some tips, mainly uh, having a background that is less busy. Uh, also, to provide us some, some uh, still photos and maybe some brochures that we can put into the video for her. If you'll do the raw video, I'll help you turn it into a commercial. So sometimes I may ask you to do it two or three times uh, until we get enough information there uh, to, to create one. Now, on Monday night, Marlo joined us. Can you tell where Marlo is here? Well, that's over in Asheville. That's the Biltmore House behind her. She's, she's from out Asheville. And she is in the human resource and, uh, business, not HR work, but helping employers keep keep employees, build teams, and such as that. She's been, a, been at this a while and has done an excellent job with her marketing campaign. Wanted to show you some of her work, uh, good colors, good relationships. Marlo d hadn't done mission and vision and promise statements, but she puts real meat into her presentation and what she's saying so they actually become that. She's done a great job here offering a menu of her services so uh, people know what she has to offer. And she didn't call it mission and vision statement. She called it my beliefs. So I appreciate the fact that she's out of the box with that. Uh, got some really uh, strong commitments that she's ready to make to her customers, so we're happy for, for her to do it. I was real proud of her for having on her website an anti-racist pledge. So you can tell that this is on her mind. Uh, more and more people ought to be doing this. Uh, so I congratulate you for, for making that move. Uh, Madison is over in Rayford and Fedville, and his business is security services. Uh, just getting started with it and looking forward to watching it grow. now. Where is your information? I want to be able to do more and more for you together with you so that we can start sending it out to our customers. But each and every one of us need to be into it, providing the information that we can do. I, there's so many uh, duplicate names on Facebook. I have spent many hours searching for some of you that I know are here, but I can't find you. So let me ask you, to find me on Facebook, Steve Carver, and there's a lot of Steves there. But when you start scrolling down and look at the pictures, you'll see old Otis here, Otis and I laying in the hammock. That'll be the Steve Carver you're looking for. I want to uh, really encourage you to find me and send me a like. Uh, let's uh, join up so that we can start watching each other's business grow on Facebook and uh, start uh, uh, actually promoting uh, your business there uh, with our other people online here. So again, if you can send me your video, we can enhance it. We had a little video of, of one of our hay bales that was kind of raw. Uh, I just went out in the field and took the, the machine working, uh, sent it to our our, um, our wonderful uh, virtual assistants, and let me show you what they did with a raw video. Notice here that we've got steel pictures inserted in it. We've got this text at the bottom. So anytime someone wants to, to get a phone number or a specification or write some information down, if you've got it text on the, on the video, when that person stops that video, they're able to write down what they want to watch. So let's watch this short little uh, uh, commercial here that we've made. I've got about $60 in it. And that was the money I spent uh, gasoline and time driving down and actually shooting the, the film. Hello, I'm Steve Carr, and I want to tell you that CarMax FMRD330 is one heck of a fine stock. I had the pleasure to go to the field with it last week. We shot this video for you. It's just fantastic. See how you can stop it where you want to? We've sold several of them to uh, 
If you got your videos, you can take steel shots off of them and use them in other ways. And I'm looking forward to you giving us a call so I can give you a quote. If you've got your videos on there and then you have your own YouTube channel, you see across the bottom here, someone will watch one video and then go right down and start watching others. That's, that's why YouTube is so powerful and so uh, why it's important that you want to have your own YouTube channel. Really good price. Ship it to you anywhere in the United States and then get a message back from you how pleased you are. Overpuma.com. Let's do some business. Two days after that went on our webpage, we started getting orders. We started getting inquiries that turned into orders. And we've developed a lot more uh, videos now, which are really, really helping us be the number one mini hay baler dealer in the country, I'm sure, because we've sold about 25 of them so far. And they're just doing really well all over the nation. And every customer mentioned how much they like the videos and what a a, 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 a a force it was in inspiring them not only to buy the product, but mainly to buy it from us. So uh, let us help you do your videos. Okay, it's drill skills time. How many have you memorized? By this point in time, uh, we're in week three. Uh, you, uh, you should probably have memorized about four of them and be able to name off about ten of them. So we're going to go through them very quickly. I want to encourage you to do this on your own at home. Watch those videos and make it happen. So as we were getting started, we said that why, why do we want a business plan? And that's to tell us what's left. This marketing plan we're talking about tonight is going to tell us what's next. There's three kinds of profit centers, those that bring in new business, those that are all about repeat business, and those that bring in big ticket sales. The RFC is the raving fan customer. No demand, change the plan. That business plan we started on last week, if it don't work out really good to begin with, don't throw it away. Let's start making improvements to it. ABCD is going to tell us to always be connecting the dots in a way that it makes sense. The three magic words, most important words, by the way. By the way are the three words that lead us to having upsells, cross-sales, and to be able to stack your profits. By the way, if you don't get a tattoo this week, get it right across your forehead. By the way, catching fish, keep fresh bait in the water three times. Catching customers, keep constant promotions out there in front of them all the time. Keep sending out constant promotions. Next week, our whole title and whole topic next week is going to be how do we find customers? And the answer is we help them find us. We help them find us. Our business can't be all things to all people, but it must be everything to some people, and those some people will become our raving fan customers. Don't pay off long-term debt with short-term cash flow. When your business gets to cranking, you're going to start getting some money in, maybe more money than you have a place to put it, but I do not want you to start paying off debts just because you don't want to be in debt. If you've got items that you borrow money on and you're paying on in such a way that everything's good, then you put that extra money aside and save it because you want to build up a reserve, a reserve to take advantage of good deals when they come along, a reserve to, to handle uh, uh, pitfalls and unexpected expenses. You always want to keep yourself some cushion so you're just not working from, from week to week to make payroll. Tonight we're focusing on marketing and advertising. And the thing I want you to remember is marketing is the big picture, the long-term picture. Advertising is a piece of the marketing pie. And advertising is what we're doing when we're focusing on one thing or another or a certain product or trying to introduce something. Advertising is short-term. Marketing is long-term. Who's your toughest and meanest competitor? It's the distractions in your life, just like it is in mine. And I know that I am encouraging you all to do a lot of stuff. So I have to say, pace yourself. 
Yeah, you got a busy day already. You're already wide open. So when I'm encouraging you to do new things, I know that you're going to have to rearrange some things you're already doing in order to get there. But know that it's the distractions that are holding you back. And the way that you move past them is to start changing your priorities or actually setting new priorities every morning, short term. Every morning before you take your head off the pillow, what's three things you don't get accomplished before lunch? And you stay with it, fight the distractions until you do. And before long, you'll be calling me up saying, I'm getting more done than I ever have before because I'm learning to fight distractions. The definition of fair market value needs to be a part of your DNA. It's one of those things that I really want you to memorize or to know it so well in your own words that it's there. Because as an entrepreneur, our goal is to almost always purchase items below fair market value so that we can sell them above fair market value. So you always need to have on your mind what is fair market value and, and, and how, am I, how am I going to use it. The price in terms of money that a property will bring if exposed on the open market between a willing seller and a willing buyer, neither one of them are under any pressure and both have a great knowledge of the market they're dealing with. No pressure is a key factor. Now, their fair market value determination will become law. It is the law, and it's the only value in the, in the USA that is actually a law. The L and the H, yep, again, I want you to become a hooker because the L and the H stands for the look and the hook. So we need to, to work hard on that and, and uh, uh, own it. The look is saying that in our marketing, we, we want to put uh, presentations out there that look really good. We want our customers to feel good about reading our stuff, and it needs to hold their attention. The hook is inside of those ads and presentations needs to be a call to action, a way that we're asking that customer, hey, pick up the phone right now, or come on by, let's do some business right now. But don't wait. If you're spending money advertising for a particular item on a particular date, you want that hook in there so you can tell if your ad is working or not. If it's not working, we're going to stop it. We're going to change it. If it is working, we're going to do more of it. So the look and the hook is the strategy we'll use to make more money and save money in advertising. What is positive cash flow and what is negative cash flow? Well, in week number five, we're going to talk about how to fund and cash flow your business. And cash flow is always needs to be on our mind because it's the lifeblood and the heartbeat and the blood uh, flowing through our, our veins or in our business. I take it to the level of saying this. Sure, everybody knows that positive cash flow is you're taking in more money than you're sending out. And negative cash flow is red ink. That's more money going out than it's coming in. But that's too simplified. Cash flow is so important, I want you to consider it from here on out. If you're in the presence of someone that has money to spend or in a position to give you an order, that's positive cash flow. If they walk out without giving you any money, that's negative cash flow. So cash flow is just not something we're going to read about. Cash flow is something we're going to be doing things about every time we have the opportunity. While it's there and while it's alive, the cash flow opportunities uh, need to be dealt with then. Not wait until the end of the year or the end of the month and say, well, I wonder how my cash flow is doing. I can tell you how your cash flow is doing every day, depending on how you're handling individual situations. Take it or leave it is the worst mistake that you will make in pricing your products to your customers. Take it or leave it is saying to that customer, okay, it's my way or no way. And if you're not ready to pay my price, just leave. It's take it or leave it. Just go ahead and leave because 
I'm not going to discount it any, and I'm not going to negotiate any. Some people operate that way, but let me tell you, most people that stay in business a lot of years and have a lot of repeat business do not operate that way. In other words, they are working really hard to help the customer talk to them and make suggestions and, and do just so much uh, to keep the business alive. Hello, Ms. Rush. Welcome tonight. Glad to have you on board. I was talking about you a little earlier and hoping you would join us. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, indeed. I do want you to uh, to go in the chat, if you will, and give me your first and last name so that I can get it right. And uh, I, I want to spell it right and send you an email that's correct, okay? Tell me a little bit about your business as well. So uh, right. looking forward to getting that information from you. And welcome again. <laughs> Thank you. We're not going to be doing take it or leave it. We're going to give our customers options, and we'll talk about that a lot a little later on. Maybe you're brand new in business. Maybe you haven't ever purchased and, uh, and then tried to resell stuff. So through the years, customers, uh, uh, clients like yourself have come to me and said, give me, a, give me a hint. What do I do? A good, safe place to start when you're starting to price items it's the three times rule. So we'll call this Steve's, Papa Steve's three times rule. Whatever something costs you, multiply it times three, and that'll be the selling price. Just as simplistic as that. Because if you're doing that, that three times rule is really going to pay a dividend for you. And we're going to talk about that particularly tonight. But the three times rule, whatever it costs you, multiply it times three and start there. Then, of course, you want to see how that stacks up in the market, and you might have to make some adjustments. The next rule is the 27 times rule. In marketing, the 27 times rule teaches us and reminds us of some real truths. Number one, a customer has to see or will require seeing your presentation, reading about you, visiting in some way you and, and, and your business, nine times before they will make a major commitment to you to buy something of high value. Nine times. That's been true now for 35 years or maybe longer. It's true today even when my customer is on the Internet, exchanging emails, telephone calls, looking at web pages. Uh, and, and because people can have websites, the number may be more than nine. But it doesn't happen the first time, almost never. So nine times needs to be in our mind. And now next, doing the very best we can do, and we can do really good, customers will miss seeing our presentations two out of three times. Two out of three times, even though we've got it in the perfect place. Because that's the way things are. They turn three pages instead of two. They look this way instead of that way and seeing your sign. So if they're going to miss seeing our ads, two out of three times, and they have to see it nine times, how many times do we need to put it out there for them? How many times do we need to put our ads out there for them? 27 times. That's right. Three times nine is the 27 times rule. I'll show you the details of that earlier, later. Number 21, yes if, no but, negotiating. In week seven, we're going to get deep into negotiating and forecasting and how to close sales. But if you've never had any negotiating training, this will be very, very helpful for you. I wrote a book and named it Yes, If, No, But Negotiating. And in week seven, we basically use that book as our guide. What we're going to say is, I know that if I say to my customer, I'm sorry, it's over, we're just wasting our time, that they're going to walk out the door with my money in their pocket and, I, and give it to someone else. Do you want that to happen? You do not. That's why if we're saying take it or leave it, we're going to have customers leave us all the time. But yes, if, no, but teaches us to do some really cool things and saying, yes, I can take you up on that offer if I don't have to put new tires on it or no, I'm sorry, I can't do that, but if I don't have to put new tires on it, we can do business. Yes, if, no, but negotiation is a way to keep the conversation going so that you're never going to say no. 
You never know, close the door as long as you think there's a hope to get the deal done. You see, most business transactions, uh, customers don't make the decision on whether it's the cheapest or not. No, usually most educated folks are going to make the decision on whether it's the best value or not. Now, of course, this is in higher dollar issues, but, but you're the same way. Just because something is dirt cheap doesn't mean it's a better deal than something that costs a little more. So sometimes we have to work through explaining why it's a better value, and that explanation period is the negotiation period. So using the technique of yes, if, and no, but is important. Tonight and next week, we're going to really talk a lot about the Internet and your presence there. And the most two important pages related to your business and your website are the mobile page. That is the, that is the page someone sees when they see your business on the telephone. You see this? When they type in your business on this telephone and it comes up, that's not a telephone function. That's an Internet function. And your presentation is coming from your website, from your mobile page. And the mobile pages can be really powerful, or they can be lackluster and develop nothing. Now, let me ask you, Angela, Heather, let me ask you, if if you have people looking at your presentations on their, on their cell phone and they're lackluster, do you think that you're going to be getting some business from them? But if you have people who find you on their cell phone and your cell page, your mobile page is powerful and really encourages them to call you right now or to get in touch with you, that's the difference in whether you're going to be getting orders or not. So many people don't know this. But those of you who do are going to do really better in your business because we're going to pay a lot of attention to your mobile page. So right now, I want to go ahead and ask you to have, to have a challenge. I want you to do a screenshot of your mobile page and, and send it to me uh, so I can take a look at it. If it's really good, we're going to talk about it. If it's really bad, we're going to talk about it and see how we can make a change. Because 85% of the people now are shopping on the Internet on their phone. That means we really need to focus on that. The second most important page that we're going to have at our websites is our landing pages. And a landing page is where we bring people in from the World Wide Web, and when they come into to their, our computer, they land on certain pages. It's so important. We're going to talk about that a lot later on, but these two are certainly two drill skills I want you to be on top of. We want customers to come back because the sustainability of our business is built on repeat business. The sustainability of your business is built on repeat business. One of the questions that we, you, we always have to answer is, what am I doing in my business that is almost guaranteeing I'm going to get repeat business from these people? Again, the question is, what are you doing, Heather, Miss Rush, Rhonda? What are y'all doing, Sarita and Angela and Julia? What are you doing to in your business that almost guarantees that customers will do business with you in the future? That is a big, big question. If you'd ask me that question, I'm going to say, well, first of all, I try to build raving fan customers every time I get a chance, and I'll show you how to do that. Secondly, the nature of the things I sell, I sell uh, farm implements that when they're used, they develop parts problems. People have to buy replacement parts. So if I sell enough new equipment, I don't have a continuous flow of replacement parts business for years and years and years, and I have. And the parts business is more profitable. It's a profit center number two. The parts business is more profitable than selling the the, the new implements. And all of them are pretty much big ticket items. So you see how I'm connected to the dots that I'm encouraging y'all to do? And 
well, I want us to review your business plan, uh, your plan to see if you do have market centers bringing in new customers, market centers bringing in repeat business, and market centers designed for big ticket sales. They're going to be so important. But what brings them back? It's 40% customer service. Do you have the stuff to sell? You know what you're doing? Got good lights, price is good, shipment's good, follow-up's good, all that's good. That's customer service. That's 40% of why they come back. A lot of people think that was 90%. No. More important than the customer service aspect is hospitality. The hospitality feature is 60% of why customers recommend you and come back to see you time after time because that's the way you feel and they feel when they're doing business with you. Does it feel good? Am I appreciated? Am I listened to? Am I treated like a human being and with respect? Are you glad to see me when I come? A lot of folks say business people don't have to worry about that anymore because we just got a web page, and web pages don't have personalities. Most web pages do not have personalities. But ours, the people in our Academy of Associates and Entrepreneurs, know that web pages can have personality. You can have it by the statements you make. You can have it by the videos that you put up there, and you can have it by the uh, uh, photographs that you put up there and the testimonials. You can build all kinds of personality into your web pages, and we're going to do it. You're going to want to do it, and you're going to do it because that's what the folks that want to do business with you year after year want to see. So you see this on your screen now. The world is a big place, isn't it? Bigger than we can imagine. So how can we expect with our little old companies, Rhonda, with your brand new company, uh, uh, y'all are just getting started up, and Sarita, how how can we expect a customer to find us when we're when we're less than a, a sand a piece of sand on the beach on the worldwide map? How do we get on that worldwide map at this? How do we get to, wow, all the attention is coming our way. Yeah, we're still hard to find now, but at least we've kind of got the world looking in our direction. We kind of have to do that. And specifically, we've got to get the world zeroing in on your house, on your computer, on your website, where it is right now. That's quite a challenge, right? To bring the whole world Internet focus right down to this computer. So can can a little company have the top 18 slots on something? If someone Googles a certain term, can someone be so efficient at Internet marketing that they got the top 18 slots on a, on, on a subject? Can that be done? It can. Can you do it? You can. Is it going to cost you a fortune to do it? No. Nope. Because here's how we're going to do it. With vision, Sarita with mission, Angela with some investment, Julia with some, some hard work from a, from a webmaster, Rhonda, we're going to have to use some look and hook, and we're also going to have to do a lot of SEO work. All of these is like looking after a garden. You know, if you want your garden to produce for you, you've got to do a lot of different stuff to it. Plant it, hoe it, get the bugs out, look after it, trim it, prune it, harvest it at the right time, and you'll have a great harvest. If you want your website to have a great harvest, these are the things that we're going to have to do. Now, I want to look at you to look at this page. And this is, of course, uh, I don't want to call it bragging, but I want to tell you that, prove to you that it can be done 
because there are a number of different search terms that you can type in on Google and CarverEquipmentCompany.com or Anthony Stephen Carver will come up in the top 18 or 20 all the way down. And if somebody types that in and that whole page on their computer or their telephone is filled up with my with, with, with my clicks, let me tell you, there is a super good chance they're going to end up coming to one of my web pages, right? Can you do this? Yes. If you follow the, the, the guidelines we talk about tonight, you can enjoy a Google search with your name on it that looks like that. Of course, it would have your name on all these lines and not mine. But I want to show you that it can be done, and it's just not that hard to do. So how do you go about it? I hope I've got your attention. How do you go about it? You set the priorities, you learn the skills, and we complete the homework that I'm talking about. We complete the homework because we're going to use every piece of it to help promote our business. So you may be taking a deep breath and say, oh, Lord of mine, Steve is giving me so much work. There's no way I can do it. I, I got too much going on. I don't forget it. I'm just going to lean back in the chair and not take this serious. I can appreciate that. And I apologize. But I also encourage you to keep coming back. Time after time, year after year, until you do get it, because that's what it's going to take to move you forward. So I developed a five-star plan, a five-star to get it done, and a five-star to how to do it. Uh, things that you can take this right off of your handouts and start clicking it off and putting them to work right in your uh, business now and share with me what you're doing and ask for advice, and I'll be glad to do it. Number one, identify those profit centers. I want a menu of what you have to offer. Uh, without a menu, we cannot do much of a marketing job. I want a date that you are ready to start selling. Maybe not all the stuff, but you're ready to start making some money because when we have that date, then we're going to be able to put together a planner like we talked about last week on the different things that need to be done to get you ready to, to, to start bringing in some revenue on a certain date, and generally that's not done in less than 60 days. When you list all those items you've got to sell, then it's time to let's put some pricing beside of them. Let's think about how we're going to price them, how much discounting room we're going to have. Let's talk about our strategies. And do you have the products and the services to automatically be able to start upselling? Are your profit centers related to each other enough that you are able to say to the customer, and by the way, I've got this here for you as well. All right, you got a cell phone, you got a camera on your computer, let's start making those videos. And they're going to be raw to begin with. All of us is are raw, but you know what? Raw means real. So, this week, my challenge to you is to send me a video, an introductory video of you introducing yourself to your potential customers and telling a little bit about what you're going to do. The shorter it is, the easier it will be to email. But if you can make it longer and, and, and uh, convert it to a YouTube video, if you know how to do that, then that will give us more room to cut and splice and make changes. Maybe you don't have a clue how to do a YouTube video, as I did a couple of years ago. Ask your child. <laughs> ask, your, ask one of your family members that are kids, because they're doing it in school all the time, and they can help you do your YouTube videos. Or you can take a PowerPoint and turn it into a YouTube video. So get on with it. It's going to be so important for you. Rhonda, I'm especially looking forward to you guys uh, doing some videos for us. I know that you've probably got the expertise to jump on it right away. I'd like to see some pictures of your uh, the work truck and and uh, and your husband actually doing some work. You've got all types of video opportunities, and it will create business for you right away. When we have these, we're gonna run with it. We're gonna boost it. We're gonna display it. We're gonna start doing emails. 
putting fresh bait in the water. What happens when we keep the fresh bait in the water? You start catching customers. So am I trying to motivate you tonight in the best way I can? So to do that, Here's what we kind of need to do. If we don't have a website, if we don't have a website, let's think about getting one because that's where we'll have mobile-friendly pages and landing pages. Do you need help getting your website? If you do, let me know. If you want some recommendations of some folks that can help you or to chat with you about how much it'll cost, give me a call on the phone. Let's talk about it. I know folks that are, are ready to help you right now. Find me on Facebook so that I can find you on Facebook and we can start building your business pages. Let's have that list, that database of a lot of email addresses so we can start sending out information. Think about using Craigslist or eBay or Amazon. There's a lot of different ways that we can get our message out there on some of these major worldwide sites without spending hardly any money at all. And depending on what you've got to sell, I'll be glad to help, uh, help you start there. Now, I'm going to focus again on the YouTube channel because talking about all these videos, the more videos you have that you can put on your own YouTube channel, what that becomes is a website of its own that is using videos to sell products. And my friends, with every one of you with every one of you that's on board here with us tonight, my gut feeling is is the YouTube channel may be more powerful for you than a than an uh, expensive website. Uh, more powerful one because they're easy to do. Powerful with people looking at it. It is the thing now, and you can take those videos and then start using them in, as tools and a lot of other different things. So. Make a YouTube video and put it on your own YouTube channel. If you don't know how to do it, there's all kinds of tutorial, tutorials on Google. YouTube will help you do it. I was even able to do it by myself without getting some help on it. Now, once you have a channel and you've got several scores of, uh, of videos up there, you might need some, some help on how to arrange them and, and set up some, some galleries. But that's, that's on down the road. Next week, please do a video, send it to me so we can share it, use it, and start improving it. Now, I promised you on week one, and I'll keep my promises. We've talked about them tonight. You may have good customers and loyal customers and great customers and dependable customers. But that doesn't mean you have a raving fan customer. Raving fan customers are extraordinarily important for you, and they're extraordinarily hard to create. Not. No. Raving fan customers earn their reputation because they go out in the world and market for you, tell their friends and their neighbors that, hey, you ought to do business with with Angela, or Heather's got a great product, easy to do business with. Let's do business with Heather. Planting raving fan customer brain seeds, brain seeds, because where are they? Where are those raving fans hiding? They come into the store, but I don't see them bringing other people to me. Where are those raving fan customers? I've done everything right, but I'm looking all around for them, and I just can't see them. Uh, they just don't get it because they're not making it happen for me. But I'll tell you that the way that we create a Raven fan customer is two steps. And I don't make it really graphic here. I apologize for you for being a little too graphic, but I want you to remember this. We're going to literally pretend to be cutting a hole in their head, in our customer's head, so we can get down to the brain, even if we have to take a shovel to it. And then we're going to take our hands and we're going to sprinkle raving fan customer brain seeds down onto those brains by saying two sentences. We're going to create raving fan customers by saying two sentences. One, you pledge. I'm going to do everything I can 
to see that you are 100% satisfied with our products and services. Now, when's the last time a business owner said that to you? Maybe never. But I've been doing it for 35 years with every email, every post that we try to do on the Internet. It's on every Internet page that we have. That message comes through. We're going to do all we can to see you're, that you're 100% satisfied. And then we follow it up with a second sentence. You're going to be so pleased you did business with us, you're going to send your family and friends to do business with us as well. Two simple sentences. Because it's the human nature of us that if I make a, a promise to you and I fulfill it, then you're going to be kind of mentally obligated to do your part and fulfill your end of the bargain. So if I work hard and try to see you're, that you're 100% satisfied, I know that you will automatically, when given the opportunity, send some customers my way. It happens. It's been happening for 30 years with me, and I know it happens every day. Two sentences. I want you to remember them. There's a third thing we need to do before this really starts paying off. I'll talk about that later tonight. But step one and two is saying those two simple sentences. Let me encourage you to write those down and start writing them down every time you do a proposal or, or, or do one of your messages. That in itself, if you want to take that, that in itself can become your mission statement right there. Not your vision, but your mission to see that your customers are 100% satisfied. Now, let's be realistic. COVID has not left yet. I had people tell me this week that they're very sick, that they've just got COVID. So we, we need to keep reminding ourselves, how can we best cope if this pandemic comes back around here really strong or doesn't turn loose? First of all, we always need to be reconnecting. Uh, COVID made a lot of us just uh, lose touch with a lot of folks. Go back to the people that you can get their email addresses and stay in touch with. Think easy delivery. Because that's what the people who have made it in the COVID uh, crisis were those who could make easy delivery of their products and services. Drive through windows, take out, pick up services for those types of businesses. And a good internet present for the rest of us. Because I'll tell you that my business virtually doubled and has almost tripled since COVID came out. That's, that's my internet business has done that. Yours could be doing the same thing too because more and more people are using the internet to do business. Last week when we did our business plan, remember it looked like this? And I hope you can see my cursor here. This is the... This is your revenues and your expenses. Money coming in, money going out. And part of the money going out is right here, marketing and advertising. That's what we're talking about tonight. And usually one of the frequently asked questions that I get in all my questions is, how much money should I plan to spend to make money? I want to give you a figure of 6.5%. 6.5% six six is a good number. If you want to... Uh, uh, have a, re a re revenue, <clears throat> excuse me, if you want to have a revenue of $100, I want to tell you that you probably need to spend $6.5 on average to be there consistently. Sometimes more, sometimes less, but 6.5% is a good place to start planning your marketing budget. Well, here's what it looks like, guys. The, gold, the Golden Goose marketing campaign. Take a minute and go all the way around the circle. We start here doing all the basic stuff we've been talking about getting our products together, getting our pricing together, <clears throat> forecasting the stocking, coming up with our sales strategies, putting our advertising calendar together, uh, determining our target groups of customers, 
have a grand opening, start doing some business, and make a sale. Yes, indeed, to make that sale and have a golden egg, have something to deposit. That's what I want for you in a big way, a lot of golden eggs. And then you will say, I am a success. Uh, my job is over in marketing because I bought the customers in. We had the products or the service for them, and we made a sale. Well, ladies, let me say to you, there's a lot more to it than that. Because when we get down to the bottom of this and we make that sale or we lose that sale, that's only halfway through. We've only done half the work. The thing that most folks won't realize, and you've got to get it right now, is the customer came in, your marketing plan was working because they came in and they talked to you. So congratulations. Yeah, you had the right thing at the right price and they bought it from you. That's a sale. Congratulations again. But even when they leave and did not buy, that doesn't mean that you were a failure. Because we can always not have exactly what they want or not have exactly the price they want when they want it. But the fact that they came in and you had a chance to build a relationship, to start a relationship, that's the goal. The golden egg is money in the bank. But the best golden eggs are your customer relationships. So you treat those customers with respect whether you're selling them or not, and you still get their email address and their contact information because you want to feed your database with that information. You want the customers who buy from you and the ones who didn't buy from you, you still want their information in your database so that we can start turning them down to Raven fan customers. That's where most young entrepreneurs just miss the point altogether. Not you, though. You're a smart cookie, and you're going to get it. So we make the deposit, and then something special happens. Because you are going to follow up, because you're going to follow up with that customer, and you're going to convince them that you really wanted them to be 100% satisfied, Remember those brain seeds? When you start following up and reminding them that you're glad they're happy and they're 100% satisfied, then you're able to open up their window, their brain, when you say these words. Now, please tell me what's next. What's next on your buying agenda? What do you think the next thing is you're going to purchase? Do you know anyone that's thinking about buying anything that I sell? Did you mention that your brother-in-law was uh, planning on buying or trading for a, a, a this or that uh, in, in October? What's going on down the street? Do you know those people's names? Uh, what are they all about? That's the magic marketing moment, my friend. That's when the raving fan customer starts coming through for you. I mean, big time. Because you planted those brain seeds, and now you're there in a positive way, begging them to give you more information for your business to be sustainable because the information they give us is going to tell us what's next. What's next are you going to be able to sell next month, next year, next two years? What new products do you need to be thinking about? That magic marketing moment is when you start getting feedback from your customers almost every day, whether it's big sales or little sales or telephone calls or, or, or part sales. It's amazing that if the customer knows that you're going to do this in a real soft, not pushy way, they'll start remembering stuff to tell you. Sometimes you ask them today what's next, and they have nothing to offer to you. But tomorrow morning, they call you up after sleeping and on it, giving you a tip. And now, are you going to be smart enough to write it down on your business planner and put it into your business plan? Yeah, that's where our work comes into play. A marketing plan doesn't work by itself. A marketing plan is a tool that's, we want to keep rolling, just like in the diagram. 
We want it to keep rolling so that our business stays open. But we got to we got to hang in there with it. Everybody that's part of our organization needs to understand how our marketing plan works to tell you what's next. And you'll be able to lay your head down on the pillow when you have a structured plan like this and know that you're going to be able to stay in business because it's going to come. Okay, reviewing, we're going to start up here. We're going to go through all the processes we talk about tonight. We're going to use by the way every time we get a chance. We're going to make a sale or at least make a relationship. And then we're going to follow up for 100% satisfaction, and that's going to lead to that magic marketing moment where the customer is going to tell us what's next down the road so that our business keeps on trucking. It is just that simple. So let's power up, power up our, our marketing plan and make it work. Now some little definite things that are important. If you are going to be using print advertising or broadcast advertising, doing business with a local newspaper, magazine, or the radio station, they will come to you with a, with a plan. They have a marketing plan, just like I've asked you to have. They'll tell you if you buy X number of ads uh, over a certain period of time, you'll get a certain price and you'll get some bonus stuff. Here's the message. Who is the worst person to take advertising advice from? Is someone trying to sell you advertising. Because their primary goal is to make money for their company, not yours. Keep that in mind. Be smarter than the, uh, the, the first-time entrepreneurs out here that folks take advantage of. My advice to you is, you know, we know what your marketing plan is going to be. We're going to look at it. And if they have something that fits your plan, fine. Otherwise, they need to adjust their side of the books to help you. Can I do that, Steve? As a young business without any experience, can I take an old seasoned uh, advertising executive coming in here telling me what I got to do? You are in control, my friend. You've got X amount of dollars to spend and no more, and you're going to say to them, what can you do for me with this amount of money? That's fair. I'm going to tell you you're better off not to spend your money on print or broadcast advertising. You're better off not to spend it at all if you can't find the, the right place to do it. So if someone's making a spill to you, you're thinking about a magazine or a book, let me know. Now, from a cold advertising standpoint, where are the worst places you can spend money? High school annuals, church bulletins, cookbooks, local program books, unless You've got a niche market that is really strong here, and you can see that if 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 I get one sale out of doing this uh, uh, several hundreds of times, not it, it'll be worth my investment. We're going to look at these ad expenses as a return on investment. What kind of return can you get? And if there's not a return there, then don't make the investment. Offer more than take it or leave it. In other words, offer your customers a way they can help uh, design the price a number of different ways. Next week, we're going to talk about that a lot. The 27 times rule again, let's review that. Customers got to see it nine times or they're going to miss it two out of three times, so we have to put it out there 27 times. So when I'm out designing an advertising campaign, I lay it out with my 27 ads like here and I'll put a dollar value on the ads that I'm running. For marketing, I always want low-cost, inexpensive ads out there all the time. A continuous flow of marketing ads. So I don't consider using some little 5 and $10 and $15 ads and spread them out on different days at different places, that 27 times, and I'm going to go ahead and spend $270. That's my budget, 270 uh, because I, I need to keep pumping it. That might be my website expenses. It could be little signs. It might be T-shirts for the ball team, different ways. But anyway, I'm spending a little bit of money all the time. If you want some money to be coming in all the time in your business, 
you're going to need to be spending some money all the time to generate it. So just know that that's going to be part of it. But now, I've got something special I want to sell, something new, a new product or a new date. And I need to put some pictures with ads, some ads with pictures in it or larger ads with menus. And those ads are going to cost me 55 or $125. Now, if I don't have a regular advertising campaign going on, then I don't have to fill that 27 times up with expensive ads. In other words, I'll be spending $2,465 on something new to get started. And a lot of people do that whether they have it or not. They're saying, well, I'll bet on the come. Hopefully it'll work. Not. We don't want to do that. I don't have $2,465 to spend on one thing one time. No. So how how can we do something different? The 27 times rule has taught us to keep these low-cost ads running all the time. People are used to seeing them. They accept them as real. So that I can substitute some of these low-cost ads with some of these expensive ads and be just as effective. Just remember, i got to have it out there nine times so you'll see nine red marks in here. Yeah, and they're spread out. And the customers are used to seeing those ads. They'll look at my new ones now and accept the fact that I'm real because the 27 times was all about becoming comfortable with you. So if they're already comfortable with you, having seen 27 times they had for several months or years prior to this, when you put in a few larger ads, they will accept it as the truth. By doing that and having a regular plan, I can achieve the same thing with $750. The 27 times rule is helping me spend $750 instead of $2,465 and therefore is saving me $1,700. That's a big deal, isn't it? That's a big deal. Fairly simple to do it. But you know what this took? It took planning in advance. It took looking six months down the road and forecasting what you need to be doing to give you time to get this set up. I got to tell you, in honesty, because it is so important, what completely blows away that really important 27 times rule? Because there's always something to blow a rule away. What blows away the 27 times rule. It is important, and we're going to use it, but I also want you to know that a raving fan customer can just exit out. Julia, you've got a really good friend of yours that enjoys seafood, and you enjoy seafood too. And you're always comparing or going out to dinner together and talking about where a good place to eat is, a new place. And, and uh, Heather's your good friend, and Heather went out and, and found a new seafood restaurant, enjoyed it so good. The price was right, food was great, service was great. And as soon as she got home that night, she was on the phone calling you up, Julia, to tell you what a great place this is and how, how she's so looking forward to you giving it a try. Now, let me ask you, if Heather's your good friend and y'all have shared advice in the past, it's been good advice, do you need to hear that message 27 times? No. One time, one message from a raving fan customer to their friend or family is enough marketing influence to get them into that into that new business. So tonight I've shown you the easiest way, the least expensive way to help customers find you. That's the raving fan customer. But the next important way to help save you the most money is look and hook marketing and the 27 times rule. The key is having a balance in here. Have a balance between the two. Always keeping them both in your mind and always using them some way. For your marketing to be successful, like putting a meal out in front of your family and friends, and you, you've you worked hard on this meal, and you want them to really enjoy it and for it to taste good. Well, as we present our marketing information to our customers, what is the seasoning? What can we do to make it taste better and to get them to get into it 
and to start creating this relationship. I want to tell you it's about telling a story. Be a human being, telling a story. Be life in it. Be fun. Admit mistakes. Uh, don't dress up like somebody you're not. It changes the way we feel, the way we think, the way we act, and the way we behave. If there's a story in the in, in the mix, people like stories. Something to remember other than just a, a price. Changes the way we think. Pictures, pets, people, smiles, real things, personality. M, marketing, black ink. A, advertising. M's representing salt. You know, we use a lot of salt. Yeah, a lot too, too much salt maybe. But we use a lot of salt, and that's like our marketing campaign. It preserves our business integrity and our and our our presentation in in the world we serve. The salt is our marketing budget. It, we use a lot of it. The pepper is like advertising, or advertising like pepper. We don't use as much of it, and we're real careful where we use it. Same way with advertising. We want to use that advertising budget to focus on uh, target groups and target products. We'll think real hard before we spend that extra money. See, I consider advertising money extra money. I consider marketing money what you got to do. But when we do advertising money, I want to make sure we don't get a return on that investment, and we're very, very careful with it. Got to remember that marketing is the largest piece of the pie. What are the differences? Simple. Marketing, long-term. Advertising, short-term. Now, what are the other little things that we can do while we're preparing this meal, this presentation to show to our customers? This week we're talking about the different uh, tools we've got to use. Next week we're going to talk about how to implement them. So both of these presentations are important. The mission, vision statements, and promise statements and core values that I, that I keep hammering on, and I really want each one of you to start sending those in. I appreciate the ones who got three or four in now. Start working on that. You make it as simple, as complicated as you want. But you want to have it. Why? Because you're saying to yourself and to me and the rest of your classmates here, I'm taking this serious. I'm going to make an internal commitment to kind of have a business that's going to do certain things that I believe in, and I'm willing to put it in writing. That is wonderful for yourself, for yourself because it gives you self-assurance. It's even more wonderful for your potential customer. Because your potential customer now will see that you are a human being, you do have a heart in there that's beating, and you are willing to make commitments to give excellent service. Customers who see your ads are going to try to get back in touch with you on their cell phones. And a lot of them nowadays will, will want to send you a text message. So you want to be promoting a cell phone number that you can receive text messages on. That may complicate your life a little bit, but if you want to, if you want to <clears throat> not throw away 15 to 20 percent of your potential customers, just throw them away by not receiving text messages. That's what you're doing, because so many people will find someone to text with them, and they think it's more important for them to use text than email or phone calls. So in my business, it's starting to come in more and more. So I want you to think about that. Helping customers find you, one of the key ways to do that is to use the, the, the DBAs, the doing business as opportunities. Doing business as helps you name your different products and services, different names, so we can use them on different web pages and attract different customers to come and see us. Really very important. Next week, we'll jump into it heavy, but you're going to get a lot of DBA information during the next uh, uh, all of our classes because it makes a major difference in how successful you are in helping customers find you. 
I've mentioned it six times so far, but I've got to say it one more time. If we don't have a menu of products and services ready to show to our, 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 our world, then we can't expect people to start calling us up asking about it. So I want to see those menus, guys. It's time to do it. Let's figure it out. Good or bad, get a start on it. We'll help you work through it. Everything can be improved. A menu of products and services. The menu of products and services is a list of your marketable profit centers. You see how these dots are all tying together? And each one of those marketable profit centers had a place in the business plan last week. That's why it's a must that we get that done. In life and in business, we are going to be asked the same questions over and over and over and over again. If you got children and you go on a trip, before you get out of the driveway, someone said, when are we going to get there? How much longer is it? When can we stop? I mean, and that goes on for for hours and for years, right? It's the same way in business. If you keep selling the same products, new customers are going to ask you the same new questions. Here's a tip. Start writing all those questions down. Write them down. And then under that, put a really good answer, a good solid answer that makes you look really smart and really cool. Put it right down in writing. Then you are able to use those in brochures, in your website, uh, in your emails. You'll have an instant copy and paste uh, uh, information that you can share with your customers, and it will make life easier and make your quotes more effective. Frequently asked questions is a great place that you can train your employees. If you've got those questions and you bring somebody new on, you're able to use those to help train them and help them uh, not to make many mistakes. It's, 20, 000, it's 2022 and headed for 23. It is the age of the Internet. The World Wide Web is alive and well and growing so large so quickly it's incredible. Your business needs to be plugged into it and take advantage of it. Next week, it's a big week. So here I need to mention, because many of you, several of you right here on board tonight are within an hour's drive of James Brunt Community College at Kenansville. And I really want to encourage you, really, 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 next Tuesday night to come over to James Brunt for a 6 o'clock seminar on campus. I'll be presenting how to get an Internet business started. And we'll cover a lot of what we've talked about tonight in depth. But mainly I want us to, to meet each other and greet each other and start learning to, to, uh, to network and pick up the value of, 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 of webinars and seminars. Because in your business, it won't be long before maybe you'll be given a webinar or a seminar or have an online meeting like we're doing tonight. So expand your horizons and come on and let's do that. Next, next Tuesday night, 6 p.m., I have some light refreshments, some knickknacks, but mainly we'll have a great class and have a chance to meet each other one-on-one. -on -one. Our Internet presence can be enhanced, enhanced so many ways. Uh, videos and such as that, one thing that's happening now, of course, are the barcodes. And I'll mention that, that uh, someone that's setting up a used car business or a real estate business or maybe in some different products online, can barcodes help you? What that is is when you've got your, your marketing information out there, if someone sees something they like, they can zero in on their telephone and uh, copy that barcode, and their telephone will automatically go to a website or to a web page. I'm not doing that myself. Maybe I could be. Right now I don't feel like I need to, but I, I see a lot of people doing this, especially folks in the real estate business and selling uh, new and used cars. Use your website name every time you put a piece of printed material out there. Even as big as Hallmark is, even on the back of their greeting cards, they're going to put the, their different uh, uh, website names uh, all the time. You don't see them. Even on this, they put it here two times on one little place. Logos 
fantastic way of marketing to them. Why? Because it's your logo. When people see it in the future, they were reminded that they're familiar with it and they like it. Uh, it's something special. It shows a touch of class. If you hadn't designed your logo, I suggest that you get to working on it. If you don't have anybody to help you, we've got several entrepreneurs that are members of the Academy of Entrepreneurs and Associates that will help you with it for a very reasonable fee. Again, use your different names every chance you get a, t a chance you can. We're going to leave tonight thinking about we've talked a lot about marketing and, and, and the nitty-gritty of it and the nuts and bolts. But one thing I want you to leave with is our pricing is the key factor to closing deals and our ability to get the customer to feel like I'm comfortable with this price. And oftentimes, the only way they're comfortable with it is to have had the opportunity to help adjust it somewhat. So everything is negotiable, and I want you, that message to be the underlying tone in what you're offering marketing-wise. So when you send me your menu of products and services and prices, I'd like for you to put the little tidbits in there that might make it negotiable. Options are a good way to negotiate. You'd have this option or that option. It doesn't cost you any more or less money to offer options, but it helps the customer rearrange the numbers somewhat that he can feel more comfortable with them. So have the mindset for your customer, all is negotiable. Do you have your business cards yet? Well, it's just a little thing. It's just a little thing, but business cards are important. I keep a box of them on my desk here all the time so that with every letter that I send out, I paper clip a business card to it. Whatever box that I ship out from over here at my shipping station, I put a business card in there. Why? You just don't ever know that customer may pick that up and look at it and think about something else they need or hand it to one of their friends. It's just a reminder, a constant reminder that you're always there. Now, how about sending me some photo shots of your business cards? Let's put them up, everybody look at them and enjoy them. Make them colorful, make them interesting. But even if they're plain Jane, have a business card so that you're able to hand it out wherever you are and that you've got them all over every Japanese and Chinese restaurant in town and every place that you can lay them out as a new business person, you want to be doing that. Here's the card I'm showing you right now. Now, notice on the card that I used my, my, my legal name, Anthony Stephen Carver. And that's not because, you know, I, I go by Steve. But if you go on the Internet and you type in Steve Carver, you'll see a lot of people that are not, that are not me. I wanted people who do a, a search, a Google search, to find out more about me to, to see what I've got to say. So if you type in Anthony Stephen Carver, you don't see a lot about this fella and not about a lot of other people all over the world. So think about that on your primary presentation on your business card because as a new business person, a lot of people are not going to give you any business till they take your business card home and check you out on Google and check you out on Facebook. Need to remember that. Make sure the image that you got out there is helping your business. Send me your business cards, please. A promotional brochure can make a world of difference. Ron, I want to mention to you especially that for you all to have a promotional brochure that you can leave at tractor dealerships, around at feed stores and fertilizer stores, uh, uh, used car places, letting people know that you're out there. A lot of customers do not use the Internet. There are a lot of them out there, and we want to have something to attract to them, or we want to have a way to get them to do it. Now, Judy Rogers here over in Lillington has got a really good kettle corn business where she goes around to special occasions and sets up and sells kettle corn. She developed her own uh, brochure. Uh, the very same week she did it, she started getting orders for fundraisers, People buying stuff from her to, to, to sell uh, as a fundraiser, as Christmas presents, commercial gifts, all started when she had this brochure. 
You make a little investment, you get a return on investment. A target group of customers is a niche market. A target group of customers is a group of people that we are pretty well satisfied that we could get some business out of fairly easily. We have to make a list of those target groups to, to focus on how we're going to send our marketing tools for them. Next week, next week, so important, we'll look at these target groups and then figure out how we can uh, use different methods, media, uh, and tools to get to certain people. By doing that, we'll save a lot of money because we won't waste our money trying to be all things to all people, but trying to be everything to some people. What are your drill skills? The target customer groups uh, are going to be important for us, so be thinking about that. As I've already mentioned and requested of you, let's start doing those personal invitations. How many times do you get to introduce yourself and make a first impression? Just once. So we need to practice it over and over and over again. And by, if we were in the classroom settings, and we might do that next week of, of, at Kenansville, in the classroom setting, we do it live. But in these settings, I asked you to do it with video. So think about doing that, okay? Practice your introductions. You can do it as a small business. You can make things happen. A little review now. I've covered a lot of ground tonight. What's the best way, if you hadn't done it before, to start pricing your products? Use the three times rule. Whatever it costs you, multiply it times three. Three times. That helps you have a third of the income for paying your raw cost, a third for paying your overhead, and the last third would be profit and pay taxes. So if you bought it for $25, let's sell it for $75. Once you put that money, that, that number on the market, then you need to compare, see how it stacks up with the competition. Sometimes you can raise, sometimes you need to come down, but you'll learn a lot. But that's a good way to start. You're not going to get burned by doing that. Let's look at some cost plus strategies. What does that mean? A cost plus strategy is when you take your cost and you start adding on to it like the three times rule. There's a lot of other strategies that we'll talk about in the series, but cost plus is the one that I use, and I suggest that you start with as well. How are you going to merchandise and display your products? Or how are you going to form a menu? Let's say you're selling services. How are you going to create that menu that where you actually merchandise it. it takes a little study, a little consideration. I've got a really good study guide I can share with you. And in one of our later classes after these first seven parts over, when we're doing our 10 classes, we'll talk about merchandises even more. Psychological pricing is a big, big deal. Uh, so important. That's when you we use the term 99 cent. That's when we say something is only this. That's what we don't do to take it or leave it. Psychological pricing strategies are really important to helping you get your prices right. Marketing, a goal will always be, if you're selling time for money, is to practice putting your business plan together, whether you're working four days a week, four weeks a month. Four days a week, four weeks a month. So a basic month is 16 days in your business plan. We talked about that last week, and now it's time to put it together so that you're doing it. And how do you do that? It's by filling up your schedules in such a way that if you get every slot filled, you'll make your business plan work or do even better. Got some news for you. By using value-added methods, by using value-added methods, you'll be able to sell the same product for more money than a store right beside you is trying to do for less money. And you'll sell so much more than they do, they'll go out of business. Two factors are in play. Number one, being cheap doesn't mean you don't stay in business. Number two, offering value-added services and strategies 
the value added are the extra little things you do to make your product and your service be worth more because you're going the extra mile, the extraordinary extra mile. That's the value added. Now, I put that into play with our certificates at the end of the class. Those people who have gone the extra mile and done a lot more homework or shown a lot of interest, uh, we've got some uh, extraordinary extra mile certificates for you. In life, in business, if you're doing a good job with value added, you will stay in business when other people do not. How are you going to apply fair market value? Read your handouts very carefully. I've given you plenty of opportunities, and you'll get even more. But remember what, what we're going to do with, with fair market value. What is it? We're going to purchase below fair market value so we can sell above fair market value. In order to do that, we have to be on the top of our game and know what fair market value is. Now, here's a little fun. Y'all remember this fellow? Forrest Gump, Bubba Blue from Bayou Battery, Alabama. Look there. He taught me to appreciate doing business as DBA because Bubba Blue has the message down pat. If you want every shrimp customer, if you're a shrimp in the shrimp business and you want to get every shrimp customer, then you want them to notice you've got shrimp any way they could possibly want it. Shrimp and grits, pineapple shrimp, shrimp sandwiches, shrimp creole. Bubba Blues don't have a shrimp for every type of customer, and he will have a different landing web page for every one of them. So when they type in the word lemon shrimp, they're going to go right straight, right straight to Bubba's shrimp grits, uh, uh, lemon shrimp webpage. We don't take all the things that you're thinking about selling or all the services you're thinking about selling, and we're going to put as many different DBAs on them, the different things that customers may call them or refer to them as, and then see if we can get a different web page for each one of those things. Now, what we're doing here is we're not interested in having people come to our website and surf around, look around, and then go somewhere else. Papa Steve, though, is all about having them come to your website, look at exactly what you've got to sell, jump on it, check it, and call you up and order it because they don't have to surf. You've got a web page that brought them right to where they wanted to be. Kind of like Amazon.com. When you go up there and you type in on the top of that menu, whatever it is, red, pink, blue, or, or gravy, or large or small, it's going to come up exactly what you're searching for. I want us to do that before they get to our main page. And I'll show you how to do it in the next few weeks. And if it works for you like it works for me, you'll be amazed. You want to test it out? Go to carverequipment.com and just click on some things and get a feel for what I'm going to recommend to you. I'm not asking you to do something that I'm, I haven't been doing for years. How about some shrimp? That sounded better every minute, isn't it? Master the DBAs and your business profits will start soaring. Remember now, most advertising and marketing is wasted money, a large percentage, maybe as much as 95%, of money spent on advertising and marketing is wasted, and we are not going to do that. I've done it myself. I've done it myself in the past, but no more. We know how to do it better because of the L and the H. We're going to use the look and the hook. The look and the hook is the way that we don't have advertising accountability. We're going to make sure that our ads look good. They're going to be different, dramatic, simple, but assertive. In other words, when we put it out there, it's going to be worth looking at, and it will hold our customers' attention. Good graphics, good uh, logos, good colors. But inside of that ad is going to be a call to action, and that call to action is a hook that's encouraging our customers to do business with us right now. Every ad needs a look and hook 
factor to it. The hook factor may be a discount that you're offering uh, uh, with a termination date. It might be a seasonal thing, like if you want to get your carpet clean before uh, uh, Halloween, you need to call us today so you can interject time factors to motivate people. You can always say, buy now before the price is going up in, in, in a few weeks. All different ways you can use to get customers to call you now. Your objective is to be able to gauge gauge the influence that your ads are having on your, your target group of customers. If you're getting good response from them, then we're going to stay with it. But if we're getting no response from them, we're going to cut it off uh, like, like we're cutting a water balloon. We are not going to keep spending money on ads that don't work. Yeah. Well, how do you know if they're working or not? You know how they're working with the look and hook factors. <clears throat> Your enemies, people that don't like you, aren't going to do business with you. So that leaves us people that do like you. And you don't know all these people that like you, but you got to. So what's going to make them like you? Common denominators. The personalities that you show on the page, you need to send the message that you have common denominators with this target group. It might be veterans. It might be soldiers, American Legion members, VFW members. It might be teachers or moms, uh, just women or grandparents, senior citizens. It might be the Masonic Lodge or the Shrine Club, maybe members of the Chamber of Commerce. Anything that you can find a common denominator to show on your web page that that target group that you're sending these messages to can identify with them is going to help you get their business. It's also going to keep them from wanting to discount you to the point you can't stay in business. So when we're doing our targeting groups next week, I'm going to be asking you, who are some different common denominator customer groups that you can do business with? Maybe we're going to focus on teachers. But it's all about you and the Internet. And tonight, next week on Wednesday and Thursday, actually on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we'll be talking about Internet marketing. What's the most important page at your website? The mobile page. Notice on my mobile page, my inference here is to get them to call me right now. I want someone who gets a chance to be able to push a button and dial my number, main thing I want, because once I get them on the phone and have a chance to hear what they say and start working it, then I am, have cut the knees out from underneath our competitors. You can do that too, but you've got to really want them to call you and be ready with your script and your introduction to make a sale. Your Google Buy Business account they're calling it now something else, but it's, it's still Google My Business account, is a very inexpensive way that you can have an Internet working uh, website working for you the next day with a map to your location and for people to be able to, to, uh, to give you stars for good work. We're going to design those landing pages at your website to give them power, to let people know we want them to order now. Look right here on this price, and this is one of my landing pages. At this page right here, I'm telling someone the retail price on something is $5,100. But they can pay a number of different ways and change the price all the way down to sending a check for $3,899. This, in its own sense, is negotiating. This is letting that customer that wants to have feel like they can determine the price of their equipment they can choose different ways to pay and make it less. I get very few, almost zero people who are asking me for additional discounts because they already see that I've given them some opportunities here. And above that, when they get ready to order, I give them some opportunities about how they want it freighted into them for different prices. So they've got a lot of decisions to think about uh, placing the order without asking me for more discounts. That is very effective, and I want you all to do it. People don't know you. They're not in a hurry to do business with you because they're afraid that maybe you're not a scammer or you're not going to come through with what you're supposed to. Folks have been taken advantage of a lot through the years. 
the most effective tool to help people relieve the anxieties and go ahead and do business with you are number one, video introductions. Seeing how you talk, how you look, how they feel about you. Number two is seeing testimonial pages at your website seeing what other people have said about you, about doing business with you, or references that they make. Those are the two primary ways that you can help customers relieve anxieties. But you need to have a major effort in doing that, okay? You have to plan to do it. Your YouTube is number one about creating personality. It does a lot for you. All right, let's bring it on home now. Appreciate all of you staying with me. Every chance you get, be the best person you can be. When you do that, you're going to be the best business person you can be. Remember, I'm asking you to do a lot of things, but I also want to put here, do it at your own pace. Feel comfortable with it. Let's just make some progress one step at a time. If we get this thing done in six months or six years, the main goal here is to be moving forward and feel like you're, you're, you're at a pace you feel good about. Endurance. Endurance is the magic denominator here, seeing it through to the finish line. Tonight's presentation had a lot in it, but I threw a term out here. We called it the magic marketing moment because that is so important for our, our marketing campaign. A structured marketing campaign for a, no matter how sized the business is, is one that we can always go back to and keep it rolling, keep it going. To keep it going, we need that magic marketing moment when customers are giving us information, where we're getting feedback from them about what they're going to be buying and thinking about down the road. That's when a good entrepreneur automatically is thinking about what do I need to stock? What's the price need to be? When do I need to have it? Who do I need to get in touch with? We're making notes all the time. See, this just didn't sit back and watch the money come in. Now, after you get your marketing campaign rolling and sustainability, and maybe you got two or three other people to do the work, maybe you sit back and watch the money roll in. But I doubt it. Generally, an entrepreneur is going to stay on top, of the, on top of the game, make it work. The magic marketing moment, very important. I want to say thank you. I enjoyed working with you. I'm looking really forward to showing uh, you all how we're going to take these tools we talked about tonight and put them to work next week to help customers find us. How do you find customers? You help them find us. So hang around with me a little bit. Turn your uh, videos on and talk to me about what you thought about tonight's uh, class, and and we'll uh, we'll look forward to next week. Thank you so much. Heather, how have you been doing? Okay, Hello? Go? go ahead. This is actually, um, I know it says affordable resources, but this is actually Katedra from Perfect Touch Apparel. Um, we have two businesses, so um, that's oh, why you see okay. affordable So you but, have to get um, it straightened just, out. Yeah, I'm on my phone because I was out and about, so uh, that's just, why you see it. Good. But um, I did want to say great presentation. Um, it was a lot to take in, but um, I definitely will consider a lot of the things that you said about marketing because it's a lot of things that I really didn't even think about. So awesome presentation, and thank you so much. Absolutely. What I can see that you're working hard at, at growing this. What you what you have to remember is. Just because you got that website and some good tools, that doesn't mean that the customers are able to find them. And so mm -hmm. ne next week we're going to really focus on the way to help customers get find you and and, uh, and start doing some business with you. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you for letting me know who you are. I'm glad to glad to uh, hear that. And Julia, how was your how how did you enjoy tonight? Julia you may not have her mic on. And uh, Sarita, are you still with us? Hey, I'm still with you. 
Okay. Well, thank you for uh, hanging in there with us. Did you pick up some tips you might put to work? Yeah, I did. I've been working on uh, reference business card. Can you see it? Okay. Yeah. There you go. Uh, he's got a, a good looking trailer now and truck. That's a, a one, it might want to start using some of those pictures as well. Yeah. Okay, though. Well, ladies, y'all take care. Have a great week. Look forward to seeing you if you can on on a Tuesday night. If not, we'll see you on uh, Wednesday night next week or Thursday. Okay. Bye. Bye. Right, take care and good night.